Make a computer graphic. Learn an OpenGL. As a matter of fact, you can. Don't worry, I'll get my face out of here in a second, but I just want to say hi, explain this series, what we're going to be going through and what we are going to be doing. In this series, we're going to be learning OpenGL with C++. Now, a pretty good first question to ask is, what system are we using? I want to tell you upfront, this is going to be 100% cross-platform. I will be demonstrating this, these tutorials on all systems, Mac OS, uh, Ubuntu, Windows, all of that. Okay, we're going to be using CMake, so don't worry about compatibility. Now, next question, if you're coming in as a complete beginner, which is totally fine, is what is OpenGL? Well, the times where you could just have a region of memory that you wrote to and those pixels would appear on the screen, those are gone. So you need to be communicating with your graphics card. And OpenGL, it's an API for communicating with the graphics card. Now this raises two questions. Question one, I guess, is why don't we use Unity? Great question. Why don't we use Unity? You could if you want. This is OpenGL. <laughs> Um, that's the short answer. The short answer is, personally, I enjoy OpenGL more than Unity. Unity's for making things, OpenGL's for learning things. Let me say that. Um, question two. Wait a second. I've heard about macOS Metal or Vulkan or DirectX 12 or something like that. Have I missed the boat on OpenGL? And the short answer is you 100% have not missed the boat, okay? So a lot of people, here's the big difference between, let's say, OpenGL and Vulkan or whatever. OpenGL, you're communicating with the graphics card and OpenGL is a state machine. It sits between you and the graphics card and you, you think of it like a black box. You throw in your shader, you throw in your data, it draws a triangle or whatever. And then Vulkan, opens up that black box. So all of the little internal operations to create the windowing system and everything to facilitate memory transfers to schedule tasks, all of that is now in your hands and you can get a lot of power with that. But it doesn't change the fact that you still need to understand graphics programming. And I, I do see a lot of people going into Vulkan programming not having solid fundamentals. And this isn't calling anyone out, by the way, I was in that boat as well. We've all been there. But um, it's really important to master basic, like classic graphics programming before we go on to the, the more high performance stuff. And OpenGL, in my opinion, will be around forever, at least as an educational tool because when it was created, the whole lexicon of graphical programming sort of goes along with that. Learning linear algebra and stuff is way easier in OpenGL than having to also worry about other things. So there's that. Next question, what, what are we going to cover? So I've roughly planned this out. As far as I can see, we're going to go through 13 sessions and this should get you from a beginner to, to fairly fairly confident. So the first session today, what we're doing is basically intro and installation, getting all the libraries, getting the system up, getting a window with a solid color and getting the CMake system sort of all set up and, and all of that. Um, usually with these series, I am going to be taking a step back and not going through every single line of code explicitly because that takes a lot of time and is very boring to watch. However, at least for the first few, including today, I am going to be stepping through it line by line, writing it out from scratch because there is, when you're beginning, there is something cool about starting with an empty file and then building it bit by bit. That gets tedious later on, but we'll be doing that today. Then, in the next session, we'll be looking at shaders. We'll be writing our first shader, getting a triangle on the screen. And then in the session after that, we will be sending data to the GPU. Now, wait a second, you say. In order to make a triangle, you need to do two things. You need to write a shader and you need to send data. Well, wouldn't it be boring if we had to do those, like if we wrote a shader and nothing happened? So what I'm doing is I'm sort of 
making those, I'm faking it a little bit. I'm making those stages independent so that at each stage we will get the desired result. Um, the next step, session four, is we're going to be adding textures. Very cool. Then we'll be applying transformations. Okay, so far so good. Then by session six, our program will start to get to the point where, yeah, we could run it as a single file, but it's getting a little big. And so we'll start to refactor it and we'll have a look at the model view controller system, which is absolutely my favorite system. I think it's everyone's, every object oriented developer, it's probably their favorite system. Um, fair enough. And then after that, we'll be looking at loading in models because why, why would we make a mesh one vertex at a time? That's too much. That's too much, man. That's too much. All right. So after loading OBJ models, we'll have a look at some simple animation systems for models. Now, this is not, we're not necessarily going to be going into skeletal animation because skeletal animation uses a few concepts which are a little more advanced. They're not super advanced, but they're a little more advanced. So I might defer that to a later stage, but what we'll be doing is essentially, I haven't decided yet, either interpolating between keyframes or literally just using different models for different frames. I'll start to have a look at like, what if we want to make a game? If we want to make a game, we'll have to load stuff from files. So we'll be loading in level geometry from files. And then session 10, after that, we'll be loading in enemies and power ups and things. So I'm trying to sort of, by the end of this, we're going to have a little mini game that we can play with. That'd be cool. Um, in session 11, we're going to get some text on the screen. And that's, it's not super complicated, but it will involve bringing in different shaders and different pipelines because we'll have one to do all the 3D rendering and then we'll have another layer on top of that doing 2D rendering. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then after that session 12, we'll look at lighting. And then in session 13, we'll have a look at a menu. Now, by the time we get this menu done, we will actually have the, the basics of a pretty good program, I would say, because we'll have different layers for 3D and 2D rendering working together. And we'll also have different stages of a program working together and we'll have to sort of tie that up. But anyway, that is a brief overview of what we're doing. Now I'll get my face out of the way and we'll get into it. All right. Okay, so here we are in VS Code. And again, just a warning, this first session is going to be a little bit dry. There's going to be a little bit of iteration involved, but I really do think it's good to start from zero and show how to get where we want to go. So that being said, really, the first thing we're going to need to do is open a folder for our project. Now, if you don't have a folder pre-made, you can, of course, make a new folder. But I have got this OpenGL folder with nothing in it, but that's where I'm going to make my project. That's where I'm making it. Okay, so OpenGL folder is open. Now, there are two big folders that we're going to need. One is SRC. That's what it's standardly, call standardly called. That's where I'm putting my source code. The Oops, not inside there. And the other one is dependencies, if I spelt that right. I hope so. Now, in the source folder, I'm just going to go ahead and make a new file. I like to have a single header, which includes basically all the major libraries that I'm going to have. I'm a little slow on the uptake, but when I was first learning C++, I really didn't understand what that pragma once meant. That pragma once basically means that this header can be included a whole bunch of times and it's not re-importing everything, basically. It's essentially a header guard. So I'm going to need a few things. We're going to need, uh, let's go, let's go. First of all, IO stream. You know what? Let's keep it super simple. Let's just make, let's just print something out to the console and then worry about this other stuff. All right. So super briefly, IO stream is just for printing to and from the console. GLFW3 will spin up a window. It's a cross-platform windowing library. That's all it does. Glad will load in extra 
OpenGL functionality. I'll talk about that. So, IO stream, fair enough. There we go, we've got IO stream. Now let's use that. We'll go ahead and make a new file. We'll call this main.cpp and we will include that. There we have it. Almost the simplest program we can make. Now, in order to make this, we're going to need to set up CMake. So we'll just go ahead and make a new, oh, not, not there, not there. Make a new file and this needs to be called, there we go, cmakelists.txt. We know that that's recognized because it has come up with this CMake symbol. This is probably a good time to mention that we need CMake. And if we don't have CMake, I'll be going through this on all systems that I have, but uh, brew install CMake is probably the easiest way to do it on Mac OS. Here it tells me I already have it and it's up to date. Excellent, great. But on the Visual Studio Code side, there are some extensions which will help with this as well. So if we search for CMake, there are two major extensions that I have. First up, I have the CMake extension, which basically does code completion and IntelliSense on CMake stuff. And then I have CMake tools. And what CMake tools does is it gives me the option to configure projects, build projects, all that sort of stuff, all that jazz. It sets it up so that I will get a nice little panel down here so I can like just build and run with a click. Okay, so have a little bit of CMake boilerplate that I need to go through. So I will set the minimum CMake version that I want. I will define my project. So my project is going to be called Hello Window. And it's got a version as well. Okay, great. So what I'm gonna to need to do is I'm going to need to set the files for my, uh, set the files which are going to be compiled and linked, basically. So I add executable, add that to hello window. I'll just do this for now, I'll show you. I'll show you why. I changed my mind. Let's just, let's just have this. This is really, really bare bones. Now see that down the bottom, I don't have any nice CMake stuff. And there's a reason for that because I haven't really configured the project. So I can go to command palette <clears throat> and search CMake. We have all these bits here. These are all useful, but I'm gonna configure. So when I click configure, oh yeah, it already detects. Now see that we've got an error. What does the error say? CMake cannot determine linker language. Yeah, I mean, that's weird, right? But it sort of makes sense because we have a head header file, but headers are just either C or C++. We don't know which one it is. So I'm also going to, this might be a little, I, I mean, no one would do this. No one would ever do this, but if you want to do it like this, then now you know you need to include a CPP. So as you can see, we've gone through and I don't think there's any errors here. We've got it. We can go ahead and build that, fingers crossed. Boop, it says, hello world. Very cool. So now let's get into the windowing stuff because I want to actually make a window in my program. So what I will do is just open up and I've got this already. I was doing this before, but um, if you search GLFW3 download, go to their download page. We have all this stuff. Um, I'm just going to get the Mac OS pre-compiled binaries. Click that. Just pretend that I downloaded it. Here it is. And if we click in here, we have all of this stuff, including this GLFW folder. And we also have, if we go lib universal, I guess, I've got this stuff that's important as well. But anyway, I'm gonna grab this GLFW stuff and go over to my OpenGL inside dependencies, paste that. Okay, so we should have GLFW in our dependencies. So we'll go ahead and we'll say, alrighty. All right. So, I mean, look, in dependencies, I have GLFW and GLFW3.h. That is awesome. But we're getting an error. And of course, 
why would we not get an error? Because we've included this stuff, but we haven't specified, by the way, this is this is the like where my include stuff is. So if we just go over right down below, let's go target include directories for my project. All right, and now if we look over here, the include error is gone. Very cool, all right. So let's actually start chomping into the program. Let's make a window. So I'm gonna, I'll say, all right. Alrighty, so here we are creating the window. We're gonna set the width, 640, the height, 480. This is all standard stuff. The name of the window, my window. Ha ha. Alrighty. Then we have these ones, GLFW monitor and GLFW, like a window that we might be sharing resources with. Now, for the monitor, I'm gonna put null. And what that means is, it's basically which monitor is this going to be full screened on? Now, if we put this as null, it will just be floating around as a random window. It's not full screen anywhere. But we could, of course, set like primary monitor, secondary monitor or something, and it would appear full screen on there. Now, we are also not going to be sharing resources with any other windows, so we'll put null for that as well. And we can probably just leave it at this. So. If this were to work, a window would suddenly appear and disappear. Let's give this a go. Let's go build. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay. Right. So have a look here. We've got an error. And that's fine. I set it up this way. So it says we're starting the build. And we go ahead. We build all that stuff. And then... Mm -mm -mm. We're going through. And then we fail. And it says... Here we go, this is a big one. Undefined symbols for architecture, architecture ARM64, GLFW create window. So what, what we've got is this GLFW3 header basically points to all this stuff and says, hey, we've got, we've got this stuff. We've got these, you know, function definitions and stuff, but it doesn't actually, it's not the source code. So what we need is a few things. We need to go back and link to the library that's hello window, we need to link to the GLFW library. No errors, I think. We'll just build. Okay. Run that. Seems to work. Now, if that wasn't working, what you might need, I'll be honest, this, this has actually surprised me a little bit that it worked. I was thinking I'd need to bring in another library. You can bring in the, if I bring this up, you can bring in the, the lib arm um, 64 if you want to dynamically link. You can also put this in a folder basically that it, it will search for. But another option is to run this brew install GLFW and that should install it on the system. And if not, if none of those approaches work, then good luck, I guess. Okay, so we've linked to the library and it, it worked, it worked. So we can actually show this by keeping it around for a little bit longer. So we can go in here and say, Okay, so this is, again, almost the simplest loop you could possibly have. So we just keep this window up until basically the user hits the X. And this poll events just keeps the event stack, the event queue from overflowing. Because every frame, when we move the mouse, when we press a key, there's an event which gets put onto an event queue. So we just want to clear that every frame. So we were to run this, we see the window my window. Very cool. Very nice. Now, let me see if we can get away with this. So just setting the red, green, blue RGBA color that we're going to clear the window with every frame. And let's just go ahead and um, swap buffers. That'll just keep the display updated. 
and see if anything happens. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Right, yeah, so have a look at this. The window stuff was fine. We made a window. Job done. But then over here, it says undefined symbols. GL clear color. So the thing with OpenGL is it's basically a spec. If we want to actually implement OpenGL, we need to go and load all of the procedures from from wherever they are defined. And there's a library which is really helpful for this. It's called GLAD. I think of it as GL additional dependencies. And so the way we get this basically is we'll go ahead and go, yeah, GLAD download. We pop in here. We have this, um, yeah, just having a look here. This series, uh, this generator. So I'm going to get, I think, I think Mac OS does everything up to 4.1. So I'll just, I'll go 4.0 just to be safe. It really doesn't matter. And we're going to go, yep, yeah, we're going to go OpenGL. We will go in core profile and we'll just go generate that. Okay, so go ahead and download, open that up and we get this source code, glad.c and we get this, this stuff here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab all of this, merge those. So now I've got this glad header in here and then I'm also going to grab just the glad folder, I think and put that in my dependencies. Get rid of that. Okay. So again, if I go back to my structure here, I've now got my glad.c in there. And if I look in here, I've got that glad header. So now I'll go ahead and include it. Mm, and we have a bunch of errors. Okay. Oh, cannot find source file khr. Okay, that's fine. It's a dependency of glad. Maybe I shouldn't have deleted that. That's fine. Because I still got it here. Okay, copy. Okay, right. So that error has gone away. Except for what's happening here. Okay, so this is a little weird. This is a little esoteric, but it turns out that there's a special order that these things need to be included. Unless I think there's a certain option we can set, but I'm just going to go with this. So see, it says here, we have this error, OpenGL header already included, remove this include, glad already provides it. Okay, so, and it actually says that here in the CMake output. So yeah, no problem. Um, let's do this. It's a full on super move here. I think if we now run this again. Okay, so that's a little better. That's a little better. But then down here, we have this stuff. We have undefined symbols, glad GL clear color. So what's, what's the deal with that? Well, I believe there's a few more things we need to do. One of them, well, the big thing basically is we need to actually include OpenGL. So I'll just pop down here and I'll say, Okay, and that seems to have fixed the problem. But similarly, we're going to run into another issue because, spoiler alert, we also need to link the library. Let's give this a shot. And it errored out. Yep, no worries. Still unreferenced. Okay, well, of course, we will need to. What do we have? We'll need to include that, that glad C file in our program. Okay, and just to increase the readability, I'm going to bring this over. We can do this. CMake is, is agnostic around this sort of stuff. Have a look at that. So it almost worked. It almost worked. We got a segmentation fault. I love it. Okay, so let me just go back to the main file. And before we do this GL clear color, there's something we need to do. And that is essentially we need to tell Glad to run into our system. Actually, there's a few things. Oh. Let me just take this one bit at a time. So we'll go set the window as the current OpenGL context that we're going to be working with and give that a go. It's not going to work. Still got the same issue. That's fine. And then we're going to tell Glad to basically run into our system and fetch all of the, the um, OpenGL procedures. So if this doesn't work, then we'll basically 
error out. But there's still a little bit more that we need. So in here it says we need some sort of um, GLAD loading procedure. And what we're going to do to get that is we'll say, um, let's get this procedure address and we'll cast that to a, I think that's working. Let's give that a go. Still may not work. Oh, it did. So have a look at that. We've got it. Ooh, okay. So like I said, this is a very sort of dry, sort of dry and improv at the same time. But all right, let's step back through what we've done so far. So we made a window, got a pointer to it. That's done down here. And then we set that window as the current OpenGL context that we will be rendering to. And then we basically tell Glad to run through our system and find where all the function definitions are, basically. And then we set the color that we're going to use to clear the screen. We poll the events so that things don't boil up, the mouse movements and stuff. And then we swap the buffers. We have a double buffer system. Okay, but something is off, right? Because we haven't, we've set the color that we want to clear the screen to, but we haven't actually cleared the screen. So what we'll do is we'll go GL. And we want to clear, what do we want to clear? We want to clear the color buffer. And we'll signal that with the bit mask, which represents the color buffer. All right, now let's give this a go. And there we have finally have it. So there we go. We can swap these things around. So if we want to make a, a more pinky purpley window, no problem. There we go. Pick your favorite color and that's it. So again, we've gone through this source code. We won't be going through it in the same level of detail in future, but I think it is good just to see how things were set up. We have this dependencies folder, which has all of these headers basically that we're including. And then we have this config header, which includes those. Okay, great. And then the big thing is this CMake lists. So we have, all right, the CMake version, the project is defined here. And then we look through our system, grab OpenGL wherever it is. That's really the benefit of CMake make over something like um, make files. And then we go ahead, we add the following source files to our executable. Okay, we include the dependencies folder and then we link to GLFW and OpenGL. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Hope that cleared a few things up. Next, I'm going to go through any adjustments that we'll need to make for Ubuntu. Okay, so here we are now in Ubuntu. I'm using VS Codium because for the memes. All right, um, and let's just fire it up. I'm actually not sure whether this will work or not. So open this up. And I think, all right, so everything looks the same as before. I'll just make it a little bigger. Maybe not that, oh, it's fine. Okay, and we see down here we have no kit selected. So if I were to build this right now, it would say, hey, which compilers are we gonna use? And I think I'll just go with, we just need a C and a C++ compiler. So that'll work just fine. Okay, do we have any errors? Okay, so I think it's, let's give it a go, see what happens. Okay, great, so that works. So long story short, we probably don't need to modify anything, but I'm just gonna, oh yeah, the Vulcanator, that's what I chose for my, for my ThinkPad that I'm running this on. But um, if we look at this, uh, it wasn't, whoop, here we go, problems, what do we have? This bit here, so CMake warning, um, something about policy CMP72 or something. And I found a fix to that. Okay, third time's the charm. So what I've been doing is I've been recording this and then apologies for the poor quality of this recording, by the way, I'm not using my regular mic, but I've been recording this and then copying it over to my USB stick and I've just been pulling the USB stick out too quickly and it hasn't copied the whole file. So you'll notice where that recording cut off before there was a little message in there about uh, something like a, a, a C, there was a CMake warning basically, like the program runs, boop, 
the program runs, but there was a CMake warning. And what that comes down to is this policy, this uh, CMP72 uh, policy, which I'm not 100% sure what it is, but I did find that if I set that to the new option, that would remove the error. And now there's something else, and that is if we look at these, these files are all like they're platform agnostic. They're just header files and source files. That's totally fine. But if we're going to actually use GLFW, we need to have that installed in our system. We need to have some sort of underlying library that we can run. And this is one of the areas where CMake really outshines make files because make files it's just a nightmare but with cmake all we need to do it turns out is install the package so if i remember this correctly it's sudo apt get install libglfw3 dev that's the one so if we're developing this on ubuntu we just run that and hope that we get our password right and there we have it and then yeah, the program will work. So I don't know about what you guys think, but I'm thinking that if I pick one system to record this series on, it'll probably be Ubuntu. I think it's, there's something neat about it. But anyway, let's have a look at the thing on Windows. Okay, so here we are in Windows. We've got that folder that we've been working on. We'll just open that up in Visual Studio Code. And again, we'll just go ahead and select a kit. I think it's this one here. Okay, I think it's this one here. Double guess myself. Hmm, okay. Weird error to get. Let me just delete the build folder for now and try rebuild it. Okay, right. So, it's almost done it. Look through here, seems to be going okay. But then we've got this, this link error. Cannot find glfw dot lib and it looks like we're looking inside um opengl build hello window so remember that when i did this on ubuntu i said we have to install glfw on our system i had a look into this and it turns out that of course windows is the most i've got thoughts i'll say that i've got thoughts on windows not so good when it comes to installing things on the system. Now, there are things, there are things which are meant to help, but this is my take, and I've talked about this before, but what I would do essentially is just pop in somewhere where I have, just grab a GLFW lib from somewhere, grab the GLFW lib from somewhere and just, just put it in here. So I'll go, where was it? We were in build, paste it there. This is dodgy, this is super dodgy, but if you're going to do Windows, you've got to pay the price and just rename it to GLFW because that's what it said it was looking for. So now if we build that, okay, it's working. It's giving a weird error that um, this thing def um, conflicts, but it is working. Okay, cool. So again, I'm curious, which of these systems do you prefer? Which would you like to see me develop on? I'm thinking Ubuntu. I prefer it. Just because it's novel, I guess. And then another thing I'll put to you. This code is available down below. You can have a look at it. What I would put to you is. Are there any abstractions that we can make to this? Are there any classes that we can make to start to split this up? We may have to fix it up later. But I just think it's a good exercise to take the code and refactor it a little bit. But anyway, look, that's it from me. I hope you had fun. I know it's a little dry, a little slow for a first session, but it's important to really get things nailed down, I think, get things pinned down. And yeah, that'll be it. So as always, you know, happy coding, and I will see you again soon. Bye. Bye.